One of the biggest challenges you're gonna have in a home studio environment like this is often just being alone. So traditionally, when you wanted to record a new song or you wanted to record some music, you would get your band together and you would all be in the same room in the same place. You could essentially be performing the song live, but it would be recorded to tape or it would be recorded to the computer on things like Pro Tools or Studio One. And in a home studio environment, you often don't know where to start because like I love recording drums, but if I sit down at the drums right now and I hit record, the only thing I'm gonna be hearing is a click track. That's not as fun as performing a song with a group of people. I have to know where I'm at in the song at any given moment. If I'm a singer and I'm ready to sing a new song, I wanna record a new song, I wanna lay down some vocal tracks. Well right now, if I decide to sing, I don't have anything to sing to. I don't have any guide tracks. So today's video is all about putting together that blueprint that we're going to use so that we know where we're at in the song at any given moment. Now these scratch vocals and scratch guitars, they aren't going to make their way into the final mix at all. So I don't need to worry about these things being perfect. I just need them to be in time so that I know where I'm at in the song at any given moment. My name is Chris Green. This whole channel is about music production tips and advice. Specifically, if you're new to PreSonus Studio One, I've got a lot of videos titled Recording Your First Song in PreSonus Studio One. So check those out on my channel as you have time. Best thing you can do is hit the like and subscribe buttons. Videos like these aren't super spicy on YouTube. So if you hit like and subscribe, that goes a long way in supporting the channel. With that being said, let's jump into PreSonus Studio One and let's record some blueprints. As you can see, we've already got a session pulled up in PreSonus Studio One. This is the YouTube song. The last video, I recorded the intro to this song, which was just a bunch of gang vocals, kind of like an acapella chorus to start the song. Might add some more stuff to that later on, but I've already got the tempo set at 85 beats per minute. If you don't have the tempo set for whatever your song is, go to the bottom of the screen where it says tempo, click the number that's represented above that, make sure you put in the number for your song. And make sure that this metronome here, the little icon is blue. If it's blue, you should be able to hear a click track or a metronome in your headphones. Whenever you're recording tracks like this, you need to have some pair of closed back headphones or some in-ears that you can use. The in-ear monitors are a great way to go. Highly recommend going with something that's at least a dual driver, two drivers in them. Otherwise, you're gonna be hearing a lot of distorted bass ever so often. At the top of the screen, you can see I've already got some arrangement stuff laid out. I'll show you how I made that in just a little bit. But the first thing I need to do is create a new guitar track and a new vocal track. So I'm gonna go up to where it has the plus button for create a new track. I'm gonna call this one Guitar Guide. I'm gonna switch it to an audio track. I want one Guitar Guide mono. That's gonna come in through my Electric Guitar Direct, which is my third input on my RME interface. I click OK. Now I've got a guitar guide. I can click and drag this up to the very top. I like putting the guide tracks at the very top of the mix. That way I can mute them as needed. And I'm gonna right click where it says guitar guide. I'm gonna duplicate the track and I'm gonna rename this one vocal guide. To change color, just click where it's got the little color square on the side. I'll make these, let's see, let's go with pink. And I'll make both of them pink. And now my vocal guide is going to be coming through the SM7B, which is going to be input one on my RME interface. I want to arm these for recording. And I want to turn off software monitoring. So software monitoring, the blue speaker icon, my RME Babyface Pro has its own software that I can monitor with. So up here, I can just unmute. You can see I'm getting a signal on the SM7B. As soon as I unmute that, I'll be able to hear myself direct. So the software monitoring that's coming from PreSonus Studio One, if I have this blue icon on, you're gonna hear it's like a delayed latency is pretty major on this. Now, certain interfaces, you can use the software monitoring and it'll be just fine. Specifically, some of the higher end PreSonus audio interfaces, they boast that they have near zero latency, specifically if you're using PreSonus Studio One. But if you are hearing a delay, almost like a slapback delay, you might wanna check if you have some sort of hardware monitoring on your audio interface. So I've got my vocal and my guitar guide ready to go. Now I just need to put on some headphones and get rolling. You can see on the side of the screen, one of my favorite things about using Windows is that if I click and drag this to the far right, it will divide my screen in half. So on one half, I've got my notepad, which has my 
chord chart essentially so I can play sing along look at this and on the left side of the screen I can see what's happening in PreSonus Studio One. So here is my track. I did use the number system on my chord chart because another thing is just making sure you know what key you're going to be in. If you haven't recorded the lead vocal yet your lead vocal, whoever's singing, if it's not gonna be you singing the song, you need to make sure your lead vocalist is somewhere around because if you're gonna create a guide track as soon from this moment forward, you need to be sure what key you're gonna be in. If you record a bunch of tracks and then your lead singer says, I can't sing this song, it's too high, even if you have to lower it a half step, that can be a real problem. So make sure your lead vocalist has agreed with you on what key it should be in. Hit subscribe and maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. You probably didn't notice at 8 a.m. today. probably scrolled right past it so I thought that I might ask that you go back and give it a try 96% of those that watch my videos have yet to hit that button called subscribe so if you don't mind me asking I'd like to take a chance to see if you kindly apply hit subscribe maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance hit subscribe I thought that I had made it as the few I got a notification, a copyright violation. So here I am asking one more time. There's 96% of those that watch my videos have yet to hit that button called subscribe. So if you don't mind me asking, I'd like to take subscribe maybe like so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance hit percent of those that watch my videos have yet to hit that button called subscribe so if you don't mind me asking i'd like to take a chance to see if you will kindly apply hit subscribe maybe like so this video Okay, it's a fun song. We're gonna be adding on the arrangement tool now. Go up to where it has add tracks, right next to where it has add tracks, there's some horizontal bars. If you can't see the arranger view, just click that and then make sure the arranger tab is open. Then when you zoom in, anytime you wanna add a tab, this is essentially just like a label letting us know where we're at. Just double click anywhere within the arranger tool here. And you can, on the right side of the tab, you see these two arrows, you can click and drag this out to be as long as you want it to be. 
Now to rename it, obviously this is not the outro of the song. So I'm gonna go over in the inspector view. So make sure you have this I tool, click that open. And you can go over here where it says outro and you can rename this one verse one. Hit enter and there you go. So now I'm gonna work my way through the song. You'll see me working on the screen. I'm just gonna bounce around hitting play every now and then to find out where I'm at. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the arranger and you'll also notice as I'm going through, I'll probably change some of the colors of the tabs as well. You probably didn't notice I can give it. 96% of those that watch my videos. Have you had if you hit subscribe, maybe like. This is subscribe. I thought that I had made it as the views began to rise. You think that I was rolling in the dough, but I was 96 percent of those that watch my videos. Have yet to hit that button called subscribe. Hit subscribe, maybe like, so this video can have a chance in the algorithm's dance. Hit subscribe. 96% of those that watch my video have yet to hit that button called subscribe. Okay, so that's all my tabs laid out. Let's try to add some color to it. The color, it doesn't have to be anything specific, just whatever's gonna help you visually. Like if I'm playing drums and I'm looking across the room at the screen, I wanna be able to see when some of the louder sections are. So I'm gonna try and be consistent with this. Over on the left side where it has the inspector view, you can right click and then click this little blue square that they have there. You can change that color of each chorus. I'm gonna make those red. So let's find all of my choruses here. Right click, change the blue square to red. Chorus three, right click, red. Color is gonna to be totally up to you. I'll make the intro the same as the, the outro the same as the intro. Those are kind of a darker blue color. Turn around as well. I'll make that that same kind of darker blue. Verse one, let's make that, let's see. Mm. Let's go with purple, purple there. And then the pre choruses, let's just go with a green. The solo section needs to be something that kind of pops out, but let's just make that orange. Okay. Feel free to use whatever color scheme you want, but now you can see the blueprint for the song is essentially in front of me now. And what's great is when it comes to recording the drums, so next thing I'll be recording are the drums. When I'm recording drums, I can punch in, or if I need to redo a certain section, I know immediately where pre-chorus one is. Boom, it's right there. I'm not just looking at a bunch of blobs on the screen trying to figure out where I need to go. So that is my blueprint. I've got the arranger tool, I've got a guide, acoustic guitar track, and I've got a guide vocal. Again, these won't make it into the final mix. I may even end up doing something different vocally. I definitely will be doing something different when it comes to guitar, but make sure you hit the subscribe button as we move forward in recording this song from beginning to end. Make sure you make use of guide tracks or demo tracks whenever you can. It's going to make recording your music a lot more enjoyable and fun. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.